G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. As you can tell by the title, this is a seven day loadout and I'm using the Helicontex Bergen backpack, which is a bushcraft range. And I'm doing the 130 or 130.5 kilometers. So I'm running up to Collie on the Bibbleman track. So I thought I'd show you how I've loaded this out and what I'll be using over them seven days. Now a description of the pack if you've never seen it before. The Bergen is based on the old army uh, type uh, backpacks. You've got the centre bit for like most uh, packs for your storage but then we've got some external pockets. So the actual measurements for the middle, the main compartment is 18 litres and, and that's it. And then you've got the one, two, three pockets here, which I'd guesstimate gives you about another five litres of space. So it's only a small pack. It's not your normal 65 litre plus that most hikers will take with them. Don't get me wrong, I do have them packs, but this is one I'll be using on this journey. So what I'll do is I'll unload it and I'll show you what I've got. So on the top here, as you can read, is the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. Now this is rated down to 10 degrees centigrade. And the forecast for the week I'll be walking is the minimum at night, they said is 12. And the maximum nightly one will be around, I think one of them said it will be about 25 one night. That's centigrade that is, it's not Fahrenheit, centigrade. And the days will be getting up to the hottest day will be 38, which it's it is today, which is just saying on the uh, on the car there, and that's 38 degrees centigrade, which is what's that? That's in Fahrenheit. You what did they say? Yeah, double it and add 30. So what's that? Three, six, so that's 78. It's so about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me know if I'm wrong down below. So the first thing like I said is the jungle blanket which I've got lashed to the top of the pack. Get that all off. Nice and small, can be compressed down to half the size it is there. It would have all fitted inside the pack with this but not the one on the bottom. But I thought what I'll do is I'll lash it to the top. It'll just make it a lot easier using the internal space. So there's the jungle blanket. And uh, on the bottom here, because I'll be taking the hammock, is the DD under blanket, which is rated down to minus five. So this is going to be more than warm enough. And if it gets too warm, I will just loosen it and let some air go between me and the hammock. So that's my insulation for sleeping there. Take that off there. So that's the pack. That's the size of it without anything lashed. As you can see I've got my uh, Z seat which just takes the harshness of the wooden benches or anything I'm sitting on. Excuse me. I do normally carry the Hel uh, Helenox uh, Chair Zero but I've been giving that a go the last few times out and it seems to have done the job for about 400 grams lighter. Weight isn't really an issue, if it was I wouldn't be using this pack because this pack alone weighs 1.5 kilos. Front pocket in here is the DD Frontline Hammock. And if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen a couple of the modifications I've made to this. So there's my whoppy slings and tree straps in there. And this is the DD Frontline Hammock. Now this is a double layer hammock, 
So there's two layers of material underneath, so that'll help reduce the mozzies getting through. And there's a built-in bug net also, so that'll stop the mozzies getting in through the top and getting to me. And it'll help prevent the flies, so then I stand here, keep doing this. It will also, let's wait until the plane's gone. You can also use this to go to ground and use it as a bivy. They don't say it, but I've used it for that. And what I've just got this week from the Ultralight Hiker website is the poly ground sheet in case I need to. So I'll see how that works before I cut it to size. And I'll let you know how that goes in future. Go back at the bottom there. So there's the hammock. Now to make shade if there's not enough shade with the trees, I've got my hoochie, my hoochie or also known in England as the Basha for the British Army and for people who don't know what that is, it's a tarp and it can be used in many different configurations and if you have a second one you can actually attach, uh, attach it to this so you can make it a larger shade so two people can share it put that down there In this pocket, I've got my cup kit. Oh yeah, sorry. In that pocket, I've also got my pegs for the tarp. I've got to take that out. Like I said, this side is my cup kit. I have a expandable hydro pack, one liter bottle. There it is. The lid off, and that'll expand to that. And that's what I've started to use on the sh at the shelters to filter my water into. And then go from there and I'll top up the hydration bladder that I've got inside. And I'll also use this in emergencies if I need extra water. I can fill that up and I can attach it to my pack and just have it hanging from there with an extra litre of water. So I'll be able to carry four litres by using that one. That's in one litre for there and three litres for the hydration bladder I've got inside. another plane. My multi-tool with a hammer on it so I don't have to keep finding a rock to hit the pegs in in the hard ground. And I've got the Soya Mini water filter and the squeeze, uh, the squeeze bottle if you want to call it. Uh, I've got the deuce, so I haven't had to use that yet, so I can't give you a 100% review how it works, but one day I'll do a review and let you know. My cup kit. I'm only carrying a 100 gram canister, so I'm going to see if I can make that last to seven days. Most days I only uh, will warm up water once uh, for a meal and a quick warm up for my hot drink, like a cup of tea or something like that. But most of the time I'll just be drinking the cold water. My Cheetah Summit teaspoon. 5ml, uh, yep. My little sponge and my little scourer. The one for the non-stick pans, so it's not going to really damage anything, even though my pots and pans are titanium, or my pots and copper. My lighter. And my little BRS stove, or titanium one.
my fuel canister stand. Little tripod one. So if the ground isn't stable enough just to have that on it, I can use this the tripod to hold that and it will make it nice and stable. Cop I'm using is a Tokes Titanium 375 mil. Pot again is the Tokes Titanium and it's a 550 mil pot and it's got the gradients down the side of this one and you read them from the inside. Goes on the outside, the back to front, but you could work it out easy enough. And to save the gas I'm using, the lid to hold the heat in so the water will heat up quicker. So, excuse me, with the spoon, is I'll put that between the pot and the cup, and that'll help stop the rattling a bit. And once the actual gas canister sits on there, very little noise coming from that. Oh, and on the front before going to the top bit. You can carry an axe down either side or down the middle or you could even put your poles through there and lash them with your web in here to hold them in place. So two poles will fit down there nice and easy. It's actually designed with being the bushcraft uh, pack for an axe and in here I have my Laplander folding saw because a couple of times on the track, especially in the last section I did, there was a small tree gone across the track and the only way to get down that section was climb through all the scrub or through the tree that's come down. So if there's any branches or anything hanging over and they're a pain I'll just use that to get them out of the way. And then the opposite side I have my mower knife, my brush knife. Had a fair bit of use. And also where the Laplander was, and my spreader poles to hold the bug net open on my hammock. Top here, we have the pocket, the mat pocket, if you want to call it that. I've got some spare cord, some uh, 36 bank line, my little Petzl head torch, my bug net to go over my hat, a spare carabiner, my Sinto compass. I think if I remember it's the MC2. So look, I can read it. Yeah, the MC2 compass. So that can be used both north and south of the equator. And the two maps for dwelling up to Collie. That's the dwelling up, and that takes you down to Harvey Queen Danning Road, or just past there. And this is just before Harvey Queen Danning Road into Collie and just pass slightly. So that's why I'm carrying the two maps this time. Now my emergency bag. It's not actually a blanket, it's one you can climb inside like an emergency sleeping bag thing. And there's another carabiner. So that's everything on the outside. Let's go on the inside now. So a small pack. That's a, a fair bit of stuff there already.
Now right, let's go to the inside. As you can see, I've still got plenty of room in this to put more in if I wish. Let's undo them. And the first thing you come to is a sewn on pouch. And what I've got in there is my basic first aid kit and a snake bite kit in there. So now I can move that out of the way. Next thing, I've got my power bank in there, my power block for recharging my phone and my camera batteries. And camera batteries, I've got a bit two, four, six, eight. So I've got ten spare batteries there. Let's just double check. I've put anything there. Oh no, nine spare camera batch batteries. But seven days. They go down pretty quick. Uh, this one here is going to be mainly for the camera. I've got one on the tripod now that uh, screws on the bottom of the tripod, and I can plug in my USB there and take it up to the USB C of my camera. And that was probably equivalent to five or six camera batteries, so that'll give me up to about 12 hours filming time and the one in the camera too so it's about 14 hours camera time we're just using that and i'll carry two of them and i've said the nine batteries there my power block for my phone which is just a, a cheapy one the x dragon and i don't believe any of the writing on the back but i'll get about two and a bit full charges in my on my samsung smartphone Another electronics pouch, that's got any more I've got in. Yeah, it's got another cable to connect the camera to the charge on the bottom. My GoPro uh, lamp that goes on top of my camera and spare US, uh, micro USBs and everything in that. Give it a shake. My pillow, which is a down pillow from Hammock Gear. I want to get in the hammock. It doesn't give much support in the sense of a normal pillow. It's quite soft, but what it is, it, it just wraps around and it just gives you more of a snug, comfortable uh, rest of your head in the hammock, which I, I really do like that. And I've got my seven days food in there. And that weighs, uh, I think I weighed it, it was just, just over a kilo. And the food in there, instead of buying, I've got one ready-made meal in there, but instead of buying enough for the seven days, I just went to the local store and bought some uh, dried food, freeze-dried food or dehydrated food, and I mixed up and made my own meals by using them, and a couple of the uh, mints and a couple of uh, scrambled egg freeze dried uh, from backcountry cuisine and it worked out at about one third of the cost of buying all the uh, pre-made meals. My basic hygiene kit, toothbrush, loo roll, that sort of thing. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the hammock going to ground if need be. So I carry a little Cedar Summit Eros pillow. The uh, that's the premium and it's a regular size one. And the Thermarest uh, Neoair Uberlite uh, inflatable mattress. So I've used that a few times and I'm, yeah it could be a bit wider but um, it, it's good. It's nice and lightweight. And the last thing right at the bottom is my change of clothing. So I think all I've got in there is a cotton t-shirt, some clean jocks and socks, and a pair of shorts. Let's move that patch. Oh, and also, before I forget, I have my 3 litre hydro pack bladder, which goes inside. I think I've got about uh, 1.75 litres of water left in there. So if you do get a pack, any pack really, 
and you're putting a bladder inside remember if you're going to be putting two or three litres of water in there you're going to lose two or three litres of uh, storage space in your pack so this pack once that uh, bladder is full which is like the three litres this is going to go from the uh, 18 down to about the 15 litre pack so if you've enjoyed this video and you're not a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button and click on the like button and click on the notification bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of all future videos and if you are already a subscriber again I thank you very much so until next time get out there have some fun and take care